Dude, this is real. I am not comfortable with this Comet Atlas. I know. And, and I like, you know, the we've all, got Avi Loeb coming on to talk about it. He's amazing. I had him on my podcast a long time ago. He put up with my. A lot of people in the beginning were saying that it's bullshit. It's a comet. Why is he saying this? He's risking his reputation. But then as time's going on, they're going, well, this is weird. This thing's really weird. Well, it's the... what? Okay. First of all, it's important to note that one thing that titillates my dumb ass is it just so happens the government shutdown coincides with when we could use the satellites on Mars to get pictures of that f thing. So we're not getting pictures. They did release a picture of it Wait yesterday. The government shutdown is stopping us from getting pictures of this thing? Y yes. Yes. That's insane. That's insane. Now That's so insane. They should open that up. I mean, it seems like they, they, they just, it, that's really weird. There are, did you see the images that just came in, though? The Europeans yeah. got an image of it. And it's weird looking. It's weird looking, but I don't know what a comet looks like. So I don't I, know what a comet looks like, and I don't know why it's weirder than other comets. But it that's does seem like it's going, loop, loop. it's like yeah. rolling in a weird way, but it's the, it's the gas, right? It's like it's what it's releasing is the weird part. Well, the weird part is coming from the same part of the universe where the wow signal came from. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. That's f***ing weird, That's dude. weird. Because that wow signal, what, it was like 70 seconds long? Some very strange coded signal that was 70 seconds long? You know what else is weird is Jeremy Corbell said a bunch of people are going to start saying there's a mothership coming to Earth and don't believe him. Remember he was saying right. that? Yeah, what's that all about? Why did he know that? I don't know. You got to tell people why you know something like that. You can't just say that. Well, I... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you know? How do you know that it's not really a mothership? How do you know they're going to say it's a mothership? Well, Corbell, he's got to do this tightrope walk mm -hmm. because somehow he does have inside con yeah. contacts, but he, if he says too much, he he puts his whole life in danger. It's such so, so, so a spy TV show. Dude, so much of it seems like a spy TV show. So much of it seems like a well-written psyop. It's so weird. Yeah. A few days ago, on October 3rd, it passed uh, near Mars, within 29 million kilometers, and uh, this camera was able to detect it. And uh, what we see is a ball of light uh, with a slight extension. Uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like a typical comet where you see a beautiful tail of dust uh, stretching away from uh, the direction of the sun. And there will be uh, much better data. The, the best is yet to come from the high-rise camera on, on board NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The data was taken, but because of the government shutdown, we haven't seen it. Uh, that particular camera is half a meter in diameter and can give us 30 kilometer resolution uh, of a uh, 3i atlas, this new interstellar object, and that could uh, potentially tell us how big it is because uh, the amount of sunlight that is reflected from it will set uh, the brightest pixel in the image that we get from NASA. So uh, everyone is eagerly awaiting that because it will be the best, the highest resolution image we have. And you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. We've had sworn testimony where they'll tell you they'll say um yeah i've seen beings there's a movie coming out um, and, and, well, hold on. and the testimony says this is sworn testimony sworn testimony the they've got they've uh they're beings and there's there's uh saucers or some craft or something but there's a movie coming out pretty soon if it's ever allowed to come out i was in it a little bit and um and they have former members of the CIA, you have others that positively say they were there. And they identified these things. They diagnosed them and they saw them. They saw the craft. And you know, there, there's enough people out there saying it, but they're just so suppressed. And the media moves on so fast on something. And, and you know, I, I've been on so many of these interviews and they're playing the, the theme from um, uh, one of some crazy tv show or something before i come on you know and they're just making a joke out of it and i get it 
people want to laugh about it. I don't get it at all. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I get the fact. It seems factor. like an absolutely, I mean, it seems They just like want to humiliate me. And I but do it's it. a deadly serious topic, objectively speaking. And if It's if, a national defense issue. It's everything. It's everything. Of I mean, it's not a national, it's a world defense issue. It's a lot more serious than Black Lives Matter or 100%. any of the other nonsense that we've, you know, become obsessed with over the past generation. So, um, yeah, there's, I mean... That tells you right there, that's part of a, an, an operation designed to discredit people who ask. Uh, we see now that it passed uh, near Mars and there will be uh, much better data. The, the best is yet to come from the high-rise camera on, on board NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The data was taken, but because of the government shutdown, we haven't seen it. Uh, that particular camera is half a meter in diameter and can give us 30 kilometer resolution uh, of uh, three I Atlas, this new interstellar object. And that could uh, potentially tell us how big it is because uh, the amount of sunlight that is reflected from it will set uh, the brightest pixel in the image that we get from NASA. So uh, everyone is eagerly awaiting that because it will be the best, the highest resolution image we have. And you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, we should all uh, see what the data shows. And in the coming months, uh, this object will pass close to another mission called JUICE uh, 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 on its way to Jupiter. It will also, um, that will happen during November. But just before that, on October 29th, it will pass closest to the sun. And, uh, and then it will get warmed up. Uh, and the question is, how will it respond to this extreme uh, uh, environment close to the sun and then uh, uh, in uh, on december 19th uh, 2025 just before christmas it's supposed to be closest to earth uh, at a distance that is uh, roughly 1.8 times the earth sun separation and after that on march 16 2026 it will come close to jupiter uh, within 54 million kilometers from Jupiter. And there is a spacecraft uh, orbiting Jupiter called Juno that uh, we hope that NASA will use to learn more about it. And, you know, all together, it's uh, very exciting because uh, we've never thought about the potential uh, implications of finding an object that big uh, that could uh, be something other than uh, a rock, an icy rock. Just imagine that it was a technological object that selected this uh, orbit to be aligned with the planets around the sun for a reason. It was designed by some intelligence and uh, we are not uh, prepared for such a visit. And perhaps the wake up call from uh, 3i Atlas, this object, uh, will alert us to uh, be more uh, uh, aware of uh, the potential risk. Professor Loeb, I so love your passion for this topic and your excitement on it. I don't know if I could have taken your class at 8 a.m. when I was in college, but um, <laughs> tell me a well, little bit how this government shutdown, I think all things come you know, full circle, how the government shutdown actually affects it. Um, you mentioned that we haven't seen the images yet from NASA because of the shutdown, but how exactly? Yeah, so in fact, uh, some people ask me uh, whether that might uh, indicate that there is uh, evidence for uh, alien intelligence out there uh, because NASA is delaying the release of data. I said uh, to them in response that uh, this uh, shutdown and the delay is uh, not a sign of uh, uh, extraterrestrial uh, intelligence, but more a sign of terrestrial stupidity. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, with respect to why I'm so excited, uh, you know, it's, I, I, uh, the question of are we alone is the most romantic question in science. And if we ever find a partner in our cosmic neighborhood, you know, it could give a new meaning to our existence, the way uh, you go on a blind date and find a partner. Uh, what I really hope is that 
whoever uh, comes on the other side uh, uh, of the table when we encounter go on a blind date with uh, some alien uh, uh, technology uh, that would not be a blind date with a serial killer you know that's really the main uh, issue here and we should be aware of uh, a black swan event where a very low probability encounter uh, could have devastating consequences so as of now my recommendation is um, to establish an observatory in the northern hemisphere not just the southern hemisphere that like we have in terms of the rubin observatory in chile so that we can see the entire skies that will cost us about about a billion dollars um, uh, because the Rubin Observatory in Chile cost uh, uh, both the Department of Energy and uh, the National Science Foundation about a billion dollars. So if we have another one that is not just monitoring the southern sky, but also the northern sky, we'll have a full alert system uh, covering the entire sky. And then if we ever have a verified encounter, then uh, of course the uh, level of investment should rise by a factor of a thousand because uh, that's the level of investment we have every year uh, for uh, uh, the military budgets. And, you know, when there is a, a threat from uh, outside the solar system, it could pose a, a, a serious, it's a serious matter for the international uh, uh, financial system. So it definitely uh, requires more attention.